Welcome back to the Gunners Club. Another Saturday night. Wherever you are in the world and whenever, we're glad you're here with us. We're spending it with you. And I've dressed the part. But can I ask you, <laughs> is it cultural appropriation if it's your own culture? Because <laughs> I feel like I'm always being lectured about something. And rightly so. And rightly so. <laughs> But we're going uh, to step... Uh, yeah, the price of 100. Um, what? That's what it means in Hungarian. I too am Hungarian. That's right. That's I why have I'm never heard this. of that. So I bought this, uh, not on my last trip, but my trip before to Transylvania. We're going to trip to the other side of the world, though. And we're going to try something called kava. Now, I mentioned this to a friend the other day, and he thought it was really neat that we were going to try Spanish sparkling wine. <laughs> Well, that ain't what we're having. I'm not talking C-A-V-A. I'm talking about Pacific Island Kava, K-A-V-A. -A. Piper mystikticum, which means, mystikticos in Greek means intoxicating. I was going to say, I'm, I'm glad having. you interpreted that because you realise this is a G-rated movie. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to have, essentially, if you've never seen what Kava is, it grows in the Pacific Islands. It's enjoyed by people in Tonga, Vanuatu, um, Fiji, really that, that whole particular region. And it's also something which is enjoyed by people in Northern Australia as well. It grows like a shrub. And effectively what we have here in powder form is the roots of the shrub. Now, when they drink it traditionally, it's quite a big deal. It's something that's part of the culture of that region that they'll have similarly to we'll have alcohol, but a little bit more ceremonial than that. And at home, we've got the most beautiful wooden carver bowl that unfortunately I wasn't able to bring here today. <laughs> but it's used to basically beat together with water, the roots, and then to get the juice of that carver out. And that's what we're about to try. I like it. I think the taste is really not great. And I don't think you're gonna like the taste, but I think you're going to like the effect of it. So why are we doing it if it tastes like shit? We're doing it because, well, I'll be honest, it gives you a bit of a buzz. You're probably going to notice that after the second mouthful that the roof of your mouth is anaesthetized. <laughs> You're going to notice that it makes you more sociable uh, and that it makes you less quarrelsome. Uh, now, this is not scientifically proved than what alcohol would. Uh, and it's something which is also culturally important for Pacific Islanders. That's the reason I wanted to share it with you. I know a couple of women that would probably a little bit less argumentative would be good. Not to mention anesthetizing the roof of their mouth. Okay, we're not, we're not going back to, um, we're not going there. <laughs> I can't help myself. Now in Australia, they have to be very careful the way they label it. So there has to be things like the country of origin, the best before date. There can't be any health claims to it or therapeutic claims to it. Now here they sort of make a bit of a health claim and there's a nice big star next to it where they write, it's a popular drink, more commonly used for relaxation and reducing stress with the big asterisk to get around that health or therapeutic claim. You may not know that this very product has its own act in the Northern Territory. The its Carver, own act? Yeah, of Parliament, the Carver Management Act. And it includes penalties for up to 14 years of jail for sale and manufacture and distribution of this product. In Australia, that is the states of Australia, and the laws always change all the time, and I encourage you to read the laws for yourself. You can have up to four kilograms for importation. Uh, the Northern Territory is different, it's only two kilograms, and the laws are very, very strict in the Northern Territory. No manufacture, no sale, no distribution to people who are intoxicated. On and on and on and on the laws go. So, I find this incredibly interesting because of the ceremony of it. When I was first introduced to it, I was introduced to it by a Fijian chap, and it was a bit of a ceremony. He clapped his hands, and I can't remember the word that he said, but it was almost like some sort of um, enchantment. Okay. And then I tried it. I'm still getting over that <laughs> trial today. <laughs> when you drink it, because it's so bitter, and kava itself in Tongan, it basically means bitter. Okay. It is bitter in taste. Some people call it kava, some people call it grog. It's got all sorts of different names, uh, depending on which island you refer to it. Me, myself, I would 
uh, drink this with something like an orange juice or a coconut water. Now the reason for that is, if you know coconut water, it's sweeter yes. than water. Now we've just done a video where I've raved to people about limes and said, always buy fresh. And here I am with a cardboard container Nick. of coconut water because I simply can't buy it fresh in winter in Melbourne. So this is how we're going to try it. In packet form, it's pretty easy. Uh, one teaspoon, mix it. And these tiki cups, um, I bought them actually in Hawaii when I was on holiday. Um, it was next door to an ABC store. What's an ABC? Uh, it's like about every bloody corner is what they uh, call it. It's, it's like, like a 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> so in Fiji, they're just absolutely everywhere. So would you like to help yourself to a teaspoon? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So just one teaspoon. So is it a powder form, is it? Yeah, this is in powder form. And then simply pop that into the glass and then mix it slowly with the coconut water. First thing you're going to notice is just how incredibly bitter it is. And then with about 30 seconds, you're going to notice that the roof of your, of your mouth is completely numb. So now how... <laughs> 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 I think we've gone away from G rating now. <laughs> no, I think we're still comfortably within the margins. <laughs> and we've given a lesson in law as well. So, and we've been, uh, we've been respectful to all cultures, including mine. Hey, well, including you're, mine. you're not... Misappropriating I have anything. not yet disrespected my own culture. No, I, there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> so, so how much of a swill do we add into the year? Um, I would go about three quarters full. Oh, okay. Maybe 80% full. Oh. And stir as much as you can. It does not need a lot of stirring. Now, ideally, they say the best products of these are ones where the filtration is basically done by water. You don't want any other sort of solvent. Uh, to be responsible for leaching this powder out from the roots. And people say that there's different qualities and um, different degrees of, of what you'll feel depending on where the carver is from. So I understand that, say, from Vanuatu, it's more euphoric, the feeling that you'll get. Um, other places, it's more for the relaxation, the sociability. So you work that spoon. To prepare this yourself, if you had the raw ingredients and you had, let's say, the dried roots, uh, what you'd be doing is adding water to it. It would take you about 10 minutes to do it. Something like this, it's basically instant to do. I do encourage you to do very thoroughly your own research on this product because it will work the liver, it will work the kidneys. Um, what you're putting into your body is not water. You're putting into your body cover. Uh, and the Australian government also gives a very good write-up on the health effects of this product. So if you're Australian, I'd strongly encourage you to have a look into that. But having said that as well, the Australian government really does uh, understand and enshrine in words uh, the respect that they have for the cultural use of this product, particularly for people of Pacific Island um, identity and people of Northern um, Australian identity as well. So Could I where, is that, where is this available? I mean, um, I notice it's a packet, it's a powder. Where, 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 where do you get it from? Uh, again, I purchased this from a rather large American online distributor that starts with A. Okay, so being a... So hang on, so is this alcoholic or not alcoholic? No, it's not alcoholic. Okay. No. So there's no ethanol in this. Okay, so it's not a large alcohol distributor such as Dan Murphy's or something, that's not where it comes from? No, no. And you can't get it from there? No. I'd say if you're looking for it, there's a lot of places you can purchase it online in Australia. It's possible because we have a lot of uh, Indian stores from people who have lived in Fiji in Australia that may be uh, an Indian slash Fijian store. Yeah. Might well have that in stock as well. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. So be prepared for some bitterness. Now you can, I mean, you can taste the fact that this is a root plant product, a shrubby root plant product, as soon as it hits the nose and then the second that it hits the tongue as well. It's bland, it's chalky, I'm not getting mm. anything. Okay, I'm certainly getting bitterness from it and that's the reason why it's called that. You are drinking it with <clears throat> very sweet coconut water. From what I understand, the rituals um, that they have in Fiji, they go for quite some time. It starts off with less concentrated, less potent kava, and as the night progresses, and generally the tourists from Australia and New Zealand leave, it gets more and more concentrated, the kava which is served. Uh, there's different ways that it could be prepared, even the old-fashioned ways of 
chewing ah. the root. Oh, chewing the root. Yeah, yep. I was going to use the word mastication, but I wasn't sure that you were adult <laughs> enough for it. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So what they sell this product on is sociability and clear-headedness, but as well as that, um, well, really the feeling that you have the next morning, that you don't have that hungover feeling after you've consumed this. Maybe I'm past my use-by date. I don't get anything out of that. It's a chalky... You, you are incredibly hardcore and a seasoned smoker because um, the roof of my tongue is already starting to buzz and to go numb from this. And this is why I was an NCO. <laughs> <laughs> and you were a gunner. So far, zip. I think you've been sold a turkey. Well, I don't think so. It's something which I will continue <clears throat> to use, um, although not often. Not often because simply the taste is not something for me. Um, but I think that in this world that we live in, people are always looking for something which is a relaxant, something which is to take the edge off the stress, uh, and particularly something just to take a little bit of a break from alcohol. Uh, and this is something which seems to work for a lot of cultures in the Pacific Islands. And for that reason, I still see the validity for me in trying this to see what the effect of it is. I was expecting something bitter, the way you were describing it. It's meh. Not really. It's chalky. No, look, I'm really, I'm flawed. If you're not already feeling an effect from this, no buzz from the top of the roof of the mouth or anything like that at all, um, I'm amazed. Well, there you have it. Nice cups, though. I love the cups. <laughs> but then I like my bit of trench art, too. <laughs> that, by the way, is an ashtray. It's an old sh artillery shell, actually. I'd like to turn it over. It's 1944, whatever it is, but I can't read the calibre on it. Anyway, it's an old artillery shell that they've made into a, an ashtray, complete with a World War I king's crown. I don't know why I brought that up. I'm trying to take away from the fact that I'm not getting anything from this. Interesting to try it, though. Yeah. Carver, would you have it in your house? If this is it... Yeah? Probably not. As a rat poison, maybe? Now there's an idea. I... <laughs> and kids, now Santa will be coming in about five and a half months' time, and I understand it's his favourite drink, so maybe leave some out for him. For Santa? Yeah. Santa likes Carver? Uh, well, if there's some in the house, Santa better like Carver. <laughs> That's all he's getting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is our opinion. We're not getting paid by anyone. I find nothing in it. Gunner seems to. Yeah. For me, um, I think it's a relaxant. I think it's something that slows down the transmission of thoughts in the mind and in the body. So it's basically depressant for me. It's not been therapeutically proved. I think the taste is ghastly. I couldn't imagine drinking it with water, even drinking it with coconut water. I find it hard to get down. But I do think that it actually does have a true effect for sociability, conviviality, and feeling a bit better the next day. I'd have it in my house. I don't think I'd buy it again. From my point of view, I don't blame you. <laughs> Honestly, not my cup of tea, and I've drunk a lot of stuff. <laughs> Just our opinion. You guys try it for yourself. Let us know what you think. See ya.